All right, so let's talk about pathology of joints. I'm going to start with osteoarthritis. Uh, and let's focus on the pathophysiology here because this is super important. It's very relevant. So osteoarthritis is when you get wear and tear leading to damage. And remember, when you get damage, you can get inflammation. So inflammation is going to come and it's going to lead to destruction of that articular cartilage that lines the bone. Remember what that articular cartilage does? Remember it um, just lines the bones and provides a uh, smoother surface for the bone so you don't have bone graining on bone causing pain. Um, so note, again, this is a degenerative disease. That's key. It's degenerative. So specific groups at risk will be people who are at risk for this, uh, this degeneration. So that's going to be people who are older, so they just have longer time for, for more damage. Then you have obese people because they have uh, increased weight, increased wear and tear in those joints. Um, next, you have history of joint trauma or injury. That just causes damage to the joint directly. And then finally, you have being female. Being female is also a risk factor. So if you look at clinical features, you can kind of deduce it. I mean, it's pretty simple. You have wear and tear, you lose the cartilage, you have bone graining on bone, what's going to happen? You're going to feel pain. And um, is, kind of, is this pain going to be better at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day? Well, it's going to be worse at the end of the day because that's after you have a lot of, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on that joint at the end of the day. It's going to hurt more. There's a couple of negative symptoms I want to highlight, and that's the fact that you have no constitutional symptoms, and there's little to no morning stiffness. Um, basically, I highlight this because we're going to compare and contrast that to our rheumatoid arthritis next. Um, but basically, it's pain with weight bearing after use, at the, worse at the end of the day. Uh, now, we're going to look at the joint involvement and symmetry. This is asymmetric, asymmetric involvement. So that means you're going to have just one, one knee or one elbow or one hip that is affected. And the most common joints affected are the weight-bearing ones, so especially the knees and the hips. Again, it just relates to the pathophysiology. Um, your hands can also be affected. And uh, there's a couple of specific joints in the hand, specifically the DIP, which I'm going to highlight here. Okay. And then you also have the proximal inner phalangeal joints. So that's these ones right here. And then you also have the first carpal metacarpal. So that's this one right here. Um, and then just note that the MCP joint is spared because that, I'm going to con contrast that to rheumatoid arthritis. The other thing to note is often you'll see osteophytes. What is an osteophyte? An osteophyte is a reactive bony outgrowth. Um, and you can see osteophytes at the DIP, the distal interphalangeal C, or you can have, um, have osteophytes at the proximal interphalangeal. So if it's at the DIP, that's called a Hebridean node. And if it's at the PIP, proximal interphalangeal, it's called a Bouchard node. So you just remember that B is proximal to H in the alphabet. So B will be at the proximal interphalangeals, and the Hebridean will be at the distal interphalangeals. Last thing to note is that, remember, we're, all, we're talking about synovial joints here. And synovial joints are synovial fluid. And you can aspirate that fluid. And if you analyze it, you can see different um, inflammatory states or non-inflammatory states, which is useful to compare and contrast. Um, for osteoarthritis, this is a non-inflammatory um, synovial fluid. I, I note that in the pathophysiology, there's a little bit of inflammation, but that's not the main process going on. So your synovial fluid will have a non-inflammatory infiltrate. And treatment is just pain reduction and a reduction of inflammation. So you're going to give them NSAIDs, you're going to give them acetaminophen, and give them intraarticular glucocorticoids. Remember, this is a localized inflammation in that specific joint. So you give them intraarticular glucocorticoids to treat it. All right, so now we're going to go on to rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to compare and contrast because it makes things much easier. Again, pathophysiology here is very, very important. So note that... This is a systemic autoimmune inflammation, and keying on systemic and autoimmune. So many, many parts of the body is affected, and autoimmune means you're going to have autoantibodies. So this inflammation is going to cause formation of a panis. A panis is inflammatory granulation tissue. So you get inflammatory tissue in the joint. That's going to lead to erosion of the articular cartilage and bone. So similar endpoint to osteoarthritis. Now, the group who is often affected by this are people who are at risk for autoimmune diseases. So often that's, that's usually young, a woman, middle age or younger, and people who have family histories of this. And people with a HLA-DR4 serotype are increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis. And you can kind of remember that by um, arthritis 
There's DL4, rheumatoid. You can say rheumatoid too. The rheumatoid. Okay. No, symptoms. Pretty much the opposite of osteoarthritis. Again, you're going to have pain, but uh, it's worse in the morning. So you have that pain in morning stiffness that lasts over 30 minutes. Um, and you're going to have systemic symptoms. So uh, fever, fatigue, weight loss. This is all just remember this is a systemic autoimmune inflammation. Finally, remember we said this is autoimmune. So you're going to have autoantibodies. So you're going to have a positive rheumatoid factor and a positive anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody, anti-CCP. So this one, anti-CCP is specific. So if, this is a good test. This is non-specific, okay? Not specific. And wh what do I mean by that? I mean that many other diseases will have a positive rheumatoid factor. So if you do get a positive rheumatoid factor, it could be rheumatoid arthritis, or it could be many of those other diseases. So remember that anti-CCP is the specific one. It's the best, it's the better test for rheumatoid arthritis, okay? That's a very testable question, so pay attention to that. Anti-CCP, better than rheumatoid factor. Now let's look at joint involvement here. Remember this is systemic, it's autoimmune, so you can get symmetric involvement. Um, Hands can also be involved. So let me just redraw what is involved with osteoarthritis. Remember, that's the PIPs and that's the CMC. First, remember, there's osteo, okay, osteoarthritis. Now let's look at rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis hits the, M the metacarpal joints, um, MCPs. Metacarpal phalangeal, I'm sorry. So that's this one in the green. And note that the DIP and the first carpal metacarpal are spared. So, um, so, all right. so this is very key differentiating. If you see involvement of the first carpal metacarpal or DIP, you know it's not the rheumatoid arthritis and it's probably osteoarthritis. Um, and note that for both of the diseases, you get involvement of the PIP joint. And so that's, if you look at the top picture, that's this joint right here. And it, because you get that involvement, you get that swan neck deformity here. Okay, it looks like a swan neck. Um, and you also have a radial deviation of the wrist, as you can see. So you get radial deviation of the wrist, you get that swan neck deformity, and you get the involvement of the MCP joints. If you look at the synovial fluid for rheumatoid arthritis, you're going to see that it's inflammatory. That, that means there's increased uh, white blood cells. So it's between 2,000 and 100,000 white blood cells. So that's a nice differentiating factor. Treatment here is similar, but also different. So uh, you can have NSAIDs, you can have glucocorticoids, again, just for that pain and for acute inflammation reduction. But remember that this is a systemic autoimmune inflammation, so you can give them disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. These are like systemic auto, autoimmune uh, anti-inflammatory medications. Um, so that's methotrexate, sulfasalazine, and hydrochlor hydrochloroquine. Alright, so that is it for a comparison and contrast for our, th our, our two arthritis.